All right. So in this video, what we are going to do is take a look at how to install the, uh, the multipass on a Linux machine. Now, as you can see, I'm on my Mac, but I have a remote Linux machine that I'm going to log into. So let me just uh, you, you know go ahead and pull that up. So this is our Linux machine. And what we'll do is uh, follow the steps to kind of install multipass in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, you know, launch a terminal. So, you know, launch a terminal. So I have a terminal. So I will need this in a while. And then I'm going to open up my Firefox uh, browser. And once I am here, I'm going to write multipass. So what we are intending to do is uh, look up the steps to install this. So I'll straight up go to, uh, you know, multipasses, uh, website and accept all the cookies because I don't care and uh, you know somewhere there has to be documentation and within documentation there would be uh, I think it's the how to guide guide install multipass somewhere I need to go check multipass for Linux so this command is for Linux right here and we can go ahead and choose other OS's but Linux is what we are after uh, okay, so I'm going to get this aside and we have the terminal here. Let me go ahead and paste that on terminal and know that we will need to use sudo here. Uh, sudo snap install. I give my password uh, and then we just wait while it installs. You know, there is... Uh, there is like a level of satisfaction it's an odd satisfaction that at least i get by looking at the progress bar make progress and we are almost uh, done now of course the download and install time depends on your network speed uh, and let's see uh, should install it now done and uh, something happened okay so the remote connection disconnected so let me log into my machine again as luck would have it, Murphy's Law in action. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, what's happening? My remote machine doesn't seem to cooperate. Why? Okay. Welcome to live debugging. So the first thing we do is... Okay. Force quit. Oh, it's not responding. Let's force quit it. Yes, of course. All right. So I'm going to bring up the remote connector. Let's see. Yes, we are back in business. All right. Sorry for the disconnection. But now we have multipass here. And what we are going to do is multipass uh, list. We don't have any instance, which is perfect. And now I'm just going to do multi-pass um, shell, right? And again, we don't have to do all of the multi-pass thingy. Um, you know, if you want to, you can just start development on the Linux machine that you have. Uh, but the thing is, you know, with driver development, there are chances that we, we might do something, you know, stupid and screw up the kernel or, you know, put it in like a bad state. To avoid all of that, we are using multipass. So we have like a nice sandbox environment within which we can, you know, develop our driver and, you know, install, try out different experiments. And even if we screw up, well, then the multipass environment is what we have screwed up. And we can always create another instance and, you know, then uh, screw that up. So that is the reason that we recommend using multipass. And as we can see, it has, you know, retrieved the image uh, of Ubuntu and it is going ahead, verifying that image and then it will like create an instance and launch that instance. Let's just wait for it. Yeah, almost, almost done. You can skip forward if you'd want or just listen to me blabber and talk shit kind of yeah all right we'll just wait this is like almost done yeah i can tell it's almost almost done uh in the meantime 
can I go ahead and maybe let's see let's launch VS code so we have VS code here let that come on the side here perfect so what we will need also to connect VS code to the uh, multipass and let me just you know very quickly draw a diagram so what we are intending to do is we have our you know host machine right within which we will have um, and let me actually also go ahead and do this yeah so within which we'll have the multi-pass right and so there is a linux image running here and now what we intend on doing is uh, you know connect or rather there is like a development environment here there are some files and all of that we will be developing our driver here what we want to do is uh, take vs code and connect it to this so that we can develop here and the files get generated here right we kind of want to do ssh uh, into this and for those reasons you know um, i launched vs code um, all right so in vs code then what we are supposed to do is go to the extensions here and install the remote uh, yeah let's just type remote and remote development so we'll just install this uh, so while this installs itself let's go and check what happened here all right perfect so it went ahead created the primary uh, instance instance named primary and it also went ahead and kind of uh, you know launched it so if you see now here ubuntu at the rate primary is what we see now we are supposed to you know carry out few steps here um, which will allow the VS code to connect to the multipass instance. And so we are going to execute set of uh, commands now. And the first command, let me just copy it from a different, uh, you know, file. So the first thing we'll do is allow SSH um, authentication using the keyboard interaction, right? So, okay, I should have talked about it, but I did not just a moment yeah so this is the file that we want to edit the slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config and then within this um you know let me just uh type colon set space and you which kind of enables the line number and then we'll search for password and uh, let's go next so line 62 uh, is essentially you know what we want to change and change it to a yes uh, by the way if you find yourself not able to uh, enter the characters here um, the vim command you can press i to go into interactive mode then you can edit things and once you're done with the edits uh, hit the escape key to come back into the command mode and then hit colon uh, wq of course you can use nano or any other command line editor that you're you know aware of this is what i want to use so set line number 62 this option here uh, to yes right and so we get rid of this after we have you know kind of uh, um, uh, edited the file we will execute this command uh, which is we are asking the daemon to reload so this has happened uh, and then what we'll do is restart the ssh service let me go ahead and do that here um, right and so service is restarted and then the next thing we want to do is uh, we don't know what the password for this user ubuntu is so we're going to set a password by default multipass doesn't set a password so we are going to do that and we're going to execute this command which is sudo uh, pass wd space the username which is ubuntu and then we hit enter the new password you know i'm just keeping it as lowercase p in my case you can keep whatever but whatever password you set is the password you will use going forward all right so we have successfully carried out all the steps now the other thing we uh, want to do is get the ip address of this right so type host name hyphen you know uppercase i and this is the ip address that we are going to use now at this point let's return back to our blackboard and then this was our host machine on which we are installing the multipass and all of that this is our primary machine 
right? And then this is, let's say, our VS code, right? So VS code is running here. And this itself has an internal IP, whatever that number was. What we're going to do is ask VS code to reach out to that IP and set up an SSH tunnel, right? And we also installed the remote, uh, remote dev extension here. And using that remote dev extension, we are going to ask, hey, you know, connect to this IP address and then it will form a connection and then we should be able to see the files here, right? And uh, let's then quickly take a look at how we do that. All right, so this is the IP address. Let's copy it, then go to our VS code. And here we will see this remote explorer, right? So what we want to do is go to remote explorer be sure to change the dev containers to remotes tunnels slash uh, slash ssh and once we are okay once we are there uh, then go ahead and against this ssh right here uh, click on new remote so once the new remote um, is enabled or you know this this kind of uh, tray pops up i don't know tray or some um, uh, user input related panel pop pops up type ubuntu which is the username for the primary machine and then add the rate and then go ahead and paste the ip address then hit the return key and then add it to like the dot ssh slash config everything's great uh, what we are going to do is move this aside uh, you know close this let me put it back here let's close this else as well then hit this refresh button here right and the moment you hit refresh uh, you will see the ip address right here now what we'll do is say go ahead and connect it in the current window and let me get myself out uh, out out of view uh, notice what happens here so once i go ahead and hit you know connect in the current window you will see that um, the vs code is trying to establish connection it is asking me uh, should we continue i say yes then it asks me for the password and this is the password we set in my case p so once i Put the p and hit return key uh, it establishes a connection and once you know the connection is established we should uh, we should quickly see we should see this change to the remote ip address that should happen anytime now Right, perfect. So here we say uh, we see that you know the remote IP address is seen, which means now VS Code is connected to the primary instance of MultiPass. And let me now get this out of the way. Let's go ahead and put this on the right. Okay, so now I'm going to try and open a directory in VS Code, which is you know the directory is again on the primary machine so first off let's do an ls we see home and we see snap what i'm going to do is create a new directory called LL ldd linux device driver right and when i now get into it there is nothing right here now i go back to vs code say open folder and all of a sudden i see here lld uh, sorry ldd and ldd again should re enforce the notion that VS Code is actually connected to the primary instance and we are seeing a view inside of the primary instance, right? So I connect to LDD and say, okay. And once I have done that, okay, it's kind of now asking me if I trust. Yes, I trust the authors. The author is I or me whichever is the correct usage uh, all right so now we don't see any files here let me go ahead and create a test file here which kind of let's say has hello world this is just us you know trying to confirm and let me go ahead and save it and now i come back to this terminal say ls and i see test and when i do cat test i should see hello world right same exact thing as here so this hopefully uh, should convince you that we used multipass to create like a sandbox environment, a virtual, a virtual, um, what do you say, a virtual box kind of an environment where we have the Ubuntu operating system running with Ubuntu 
uh, as the user and this machine's name is called primary and what we did was followed through some steps to allow VS Code which is outside of the sandbox environment to connect to it and any experiment that we do now will be uh, within this primary instance which is a virtual machine which is a sandbox and again just to reiterate we did all of the song and dance just so that uh, we have a sandbox environment in which to write our code and if we screw up and do some damage you know the damage is not going to happen to your machine not to your operating system but to the sandbox all right if you are able to get to this point congratulations you know you and i are at the same level now in terms of trying out experiments and i'll see you in the next video